Welcome everyone to today's video in which I will be making Christmas trees on a Christmas inspired table runner. My name is Milena and you are on my channel Curly and Yoni and let's get started! Today's video is actually part of a video series in which I will be making this whole Christmas inspired table runner. So I've already released two videos about this project. So the first video is about the weaving in general of this table runner. Then the second video is about uh, the making of the pickup stick pattern here. And then this is today the uh, third video, so video number three, in which we will be making the trees. I also want to let you know that I will provide all of the information about the pattern of this table runner on my website for free. So all you have to do is simply click on uh, the link that I will provide in the description of this video and then you can just enjoy the pattern. So in order to make the Christmas trees, I uh, use uh, this yarn here. So this is 8-4 cotton from Hobby. It is actually the same yarn that I use in order to make the pickup stick pattern, except that it's not the same color. <laughs> so for this one, I use the, uh, the color that is called a uh, deep green jungle or something like that <laughs> in 8-4 cotton. So in order to make the Christmas trees, I uh, made myself some little bundles of yarn. Uh, so for uh, the big trees, I actually cut uh, a piece that was about uh, 2 meters long or if you prefer 80 inches long, it, which was just, just enough. If you want to uh, play a little bit, a little less dangerously than I did, uh, I would suggest maybe uh, cutting a 2.1 meter or uh, cutting uh, 84 inches, then you'd be sure that you have more than enough to make the big tree. Then in order to make the small Christmas trees, I did bundles of about 1.5 meter or if you prefer around uh, 60 uh, inches and that was more than enough in order to make the small trees. And so we can now uh, start the tree. So I have woven for about three inches here. And the hardest part about the trees is actually just to start off and to uh, get everything in line uh, properly. Uh, so I want this to be symmetrical. So I want it to be centered. So I'm going to start with the big tree in the middle. And so uh, it needs to start in the middle. And I know I've centered my warp in my head also. I know that the middle of it and uh, my head all is a uh, it's hard to see because I stained it very dark, <laughs> but uh, there is like a big dot after the ash for it before it says the um, DPI of the head also right here. So this is usually the uh, middle of the head also around here. I know that I want a base of 43 threads. So I have one here in the middle that is marked. So I want to have 21 threads on one side and then another 21 threads on the other side. Uh, so and when I say threads, I, get, I really mean uh, like one, what is inside the slot and what is inside uh, the eye. So even though I double my warp and those are two threads, I actually count them as only one for this pattern. So they are now, now fusioned together. They are, so those are really just one thread for me. So I need to go over 21 of those bundles. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I'll stick my yarn in it and live and I will leave some tail so we cannot see it well because it's underneath but I want to leave at least this long of a tail because I'm going to uh, weave that in later when I will be fixing the end. So one here and now I will do the exact thing on the other side. So I skip the middle one and I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and also striking those gains, six, seven, five, five, right there. And this time I'm simply going to put the whole bit of yarn inside of the gap. Now I have 21 plus 21 plus the one I label in the middle. So that makes it for the three threads. So I have the base of my big tree. I can take this off. All right, so I saved you the part where I uh, counted this all. <laughs> but uh, if you want to have the exact same uh, dimension that I have here, note that I have uh, 192 ends in this project. If you do the math 15 inches times 12.5, which is my uh, uh, head it doesn't add up. So somehow I probably have warped a little bit larger uh, than 15 uh, inches because I have about 
four threads more than what the project should ask for. If you have a little less than that, maybe just play around with the number of uh, thread that you have on the edge. But here for what I've warped here today, I have 192 threads. So uh, this is how I have um, separated them. So 21, 20, 26, 28, and 43 threads. So now that our first pick of uh, the tree is made, I can now weave a pick. So I will be alternating in between um, the uh, insertion of those yarn and the uh, weaving of plain weave. So uh, the weaving of the plain weave will make sure that uh, the uh, yarn that I've added actually stays in place. So it's going to secure it there. And now I go back into the neutral position. I made sure to pull a little bit on my yarn to pl place it. I don't want it to be too loose otherwise it will look a little bit like saggy. So what I want to do, I want to make my trees go uh, smaller so they will be making three times little triangles and the big one maybe four times. So I want to uh, take the yarn where it is the longest. I don't want to take the tail because that wouldn't be long enough so really where I have the most yarn. So right now this yarn is facing down the project and I want it to be come back on top of the project. So I made it go through the project in between two warp threads. So I want it to come back again in between two warp threads but at the same time I want it to get smaller. So I want to for it to come back in between the last the, the, the next gap in between two threads. So I went out this way in between those two threads and now I want it to come back in between those two threads here. So let me show you a bit closer. So here the yarn went into those two threads here and now I'm going to take, skip one of those threads and make it come back inside of the gap right next to it. So I'm just going to take it Put it all the way through and now I want it to go back underneath the project. Yet again I want it to go back in between two warp threads and I want it to be smaller so I'm not going to... So it, at first it came through this gap here and I want it to come one spot closer to the middle so I want it to go inside the next gap here. So I push it back underneath the project like that. I'm going to do it again with the uh, two other trees. So this is the big tree, but even though it's a big tree, it's the exact same logic. So I take my thread underneath, so not the tail, really the longest part. This is where it came in. I want to move one spot. So, and be careful not to split the yarn, really. I, I know I've doubled my warp, so it might be confusing, but I'm not going in between two warp threads that I warp together. I'm really going in between two of those bundles of threads. So now I am out. I can go all the way here and back underneath the project. Here again, this is where I came out. I want to go one spot closer. So right here. And I pull it all the way through. And I'm going to do it for the third one yet again. So we have many examples. So now my three pieces of yarn are placed so I can go into the up position. And when I beat the yarn kind of wants to move again, it doesn't stay very nice so I will just pull back on it to make sure it is as I want it so nice and tight. So now I am back into the neutral position and I will be doing the third row. So I'm doing it exactly the same way.
the uh, stable would stay at first it always seems a little bit wonky but now that I have about five picks in I already see that the shape of uh, well first I see the shape of the Christmas tree forming but also it's a bit more um, stick in place there it doesn't move so much I do have often to uh, replace the uh, bottom layer uh, but again that's because the tail is just loose there but it's going to be fixed uh, once it's off the loom Alright, so now I have woven seven uh, picks. I don't know if I can say really picks because they're not really woven, they're more like rows. <laughs> but I have seven rows of each in each trees. So I want to uh, start the second triangle for the small trees. This one will need a few more rows before I start this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, make a second triangle so for the, the next pick i'm not going to go smaller i'm actually going to go wider and i uh, need to go five picks wider on each side uh, i say picks but five uh, combo of threads so here that's one two three four five and i'm going to go through the gap here and then on the other side it's the same one two three four five and i'm going to go in I just wove one pick and then I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I did at the beginning so I'm going to take the yarn one thread closer to the center and again put it down so I want to go back to uh, making my triangle look smaller and smaller Now I have nine rows here so I can start making it bigger to start the second triangle. And here also I will be going five threads further away. So one, two, three, four, five. Alright, so now that I have done six rows for the second triangle of the small trees, I will be ready to start the third and final triangle uh, for those small trees. And uh, for this one, I'm not going to uh, go as wide as I did when I started the second one. I'm actually only going to add three threads on each side. So let's do this. So we've got uh, one, two, three here. And then it went down here, so that means one, two, three. The small trees are now almost over, but we need to tend to the big one. I've done 10 rows here, so it is time for him to get a little wider. So it's time for him to get another uh, triangle. And this time I'm only going to increase it of three threads on each side. So here, one, two, three. And here, that makes one, two, three. And this is the last for this one. So for the last one, I went over two warp threads 
and then I have a bit of tail, quite a bit of tail still hanging. And we have two small trees. And now I have made one, two, three, four, five, six other rows. So I am ready to do the fourth and final triangle of this big tree. So for this one, I'm also going to only increase by three warp threads on each side. We have reached the final row of uh, this uh, tree so I am going to go over the last two warp threads like this one and this is it we now have a forest of Christmas trees so as you may notice my uh, Christmas trees are made out of big floats and I know that floats are often <laughs> from the pond in weaving we don't really like them because they tend to get in the way of stuff uh, but since this is a table runner I know that this would just lay on a table it wouldn't really be used it would only be there and be pretty <laughs> so I felt comfortable having floats I feel like they won't be in the way of anything and they won't be annoying or, or anything like that so I felt comfortable making my Christmas trees like that so one more thing before uh, we move on is that I would like to make my life much simpler. So uh, the hardest part of this pattern was to figure out exactly where I wanted my trees so that it will look all right. And I don't want to go through this struggle every time that I uh, will uh, be weaving that later on. And I also don't want to be counting the threads again. So I will only be doing that once. So now that the trees are finished, what I'm actually going to do, I'm, I'm going to label my heddle. So the first part I want to label is where I have the tip of my Christmas trees. I will explain this a little bit later why it will be useful but for now let's just trust me. <laughs> so if I look at the uh, big one in the middle so those are the two threads where I um, I have the, uh, the top of the tree so this means it is the meeting point of those two is around here so I'm going to label it around the slot thread so I simply have to put the scrap yarn here and I will be doing a very, very simple knot. Let's make a double to make sure it doesn't fall off. Then with the scrap yarn, the same color, I'm going to do the same with the two others. I'm also going to cut the extra piece of yarn because I don't want it to be annoying. <laughs> so if I look at this one, the threads corresponding to the middle. I could have done that a bit earlier on. So we are now done with the first set of trees and uh, those trees happen twice inside of the pattern so one on each end of the table runner so that's set for this end however now we need to make the other end and if we want this pattern to make sense on the table well we would need that the trees are all pointing at each other so in order to do that it means that the trees on the other side of the table runner need to be upside down so let's see how I did that so I have labeled that this is the one of the thread where uh, I had the uh, top of my tree. I know that my tree was going over two threads. I know it was going over the slot thread and the eye thread right to its right. So this is the top of my tree. So I just need to find <laughs> the beginning of this. <laughs> so I'm going to put that in. I need to leave to let myself have some tails in it because later on I will weave that in. So over here and making sure I am in the right spot. It seems right. So this is the beginning of the, of the tree. Uh, 
and now I'm doing it upside down I also need to do the reverse of what I've done for the first trees so instead of going smaller and smaller I need to go bigger and bigger so uh, my uh, thread here went out this way so now I need to make it bigger by making it come back on top one warp thread further to the right and here it needs to go inside one warp thread further to the left like that and I can make another pick So now I have done 11 rows so I am ready to uh, start making another triangle so we're going to get a lot done on this tree before we start this small one so uh, here it is the other way around than the, the, the first one so instead of going larger I'm actually going to go smaller and I need to go uh, smaller by three warp threads so my thread is now on this side and I need to go one two three warp threads inside and then yet again one two three it's going to go over here so and now i have in total 13 rows of tr christmas tree so this means that i can start the uh, two small trees so I need my two bundles of green yarn. Christmas trees after a wet finishing uh, so the yarn fluffed out a little bit and uh, they are very nice and dense and we don't uh, see uh, the warp underneath them and um, so I hope you uh, enjoyed today's video uh, I really enjoyed making this Christmas tree uh, table runners that really helped me get into the mood for Christmas uh, so I wish you all a, a merry merry Christmas and if ever you felt like giving me a gift please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and see you very soon bye bye